Hey friends, and welcome to another episode of the Soul CEO Podcast. This is Rachel Picard, and we are on episode 17. And today I want to talk about customers and how customers are good for business and how to build an extraordinary network by being a customer lover and a customer centric focus and really serving them with your highest and best. If you guys are brand new to this podcast, hit follow or subscribe on any sort of, I know most of you guys are on Apple, but if you're on Spotify, follow this or, you know, subscribe to it. And if you're on Apple podcasts, I I really love for you guys to leave a five star rating and a written review. It builds me up so freaking much. And if you guys are listening to these real time, I am taking a couple week break off of Instagram, trying to reset some of the shenanigans of censorship that uh, Zuckerberg has placed on me. But you can connect with me on Facebook at Rachel Picard and I just joined TikTok. So that's going to be a lot of fun and getting to know what the heck to do on that app. And if you guys have any great TikTok tips, well, please send those over to me. Connect with me on Facebook. I'd love to hear from you of what's working and so we can share best practices. So Today is customers. Now, I feel like the network marketing industry has shifted. If we're talking, if you're in direct sales or network marketing, and we think back to a couple of decades ago, a lot of it was very, I feel, biz op focused, recruiting focused, money focused. Where I feel like today, especially in like the information age, the social media age, where where data and info and and, and due diligence like is at the at our fingertips, right? Even the phone or the device that you're listening to this on, like we can go Google something, we can check if it's fake news, haha, whatever, like do the sort of research that everything has become about customers. And it's really the best service. Like I I don't agree with the old model of building this giant network of distributors and nobody is using the product. That is a business that is built like, what does it say, like a deck of cards? A business built on like a deck of cards, like the first gust of wind, the first disturbance, that deck of cards is just going to come crumbling down. If you want to build a business that is stable, you want to build something customer focused. And right now, as it stands, over 90% of my organization, which is tens of thousands of people, are raving customers. They just love the product. And one of the mantras that we have put inside of our team, which is called Team Heart, where everyone matters and everything matters. So everyone matters regardless of race, religion, ethnicity, creed, performance, background. We don't care. Everyone deserves love and they deserve mentorship and we provide a great space and safe place to do that. But everything matters too. Everything matters has to do with integrity, doing the right thing uh, even when nobody's looking. <laughs> and uh, and the fact that you know integrity really matters and your character. And part of that is how we lead our customers through the process. Like, are we overextending the the testimonials? Are we exaggerating the opportunity to people looking at the business and saying how easy it is? You, you will never, by the way, hear me say that network marketing is easy. It is probably one of the hardest thing, hardest things that you will ever do but it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. Uh, Just think of anything that's been really hard in your life, maybe like parenting, or maybe you trained for an elite race, or you built another business or a nonprofit from the ground up, or maybe you built a a cabin like with sticks or logs or poured foundation. Like maybe you've done a hard thing, but it was worth it to get the benefit or the result of it, right? Right. So network marketing is simple, but it's not easy. And I think when we are approaching in this topic customers, I see a lot of really ridiculous measures. And I see a lot of people that overstate the results of the products or expectations. And in fact, that can get you in a lot of trouble. But because the industry has gone customer focused and customer centric, and this is very good for like the FTC and, um, you know, so that kind of flushed out a lot of those really scammy, spammy type of companies and Ponzi's and all that. We have legitimate enterprises like we are in network marketing 2021. We are building up a network of people that are usually on subscription of the product of users, of people having an extraordinary product experience. And the best networks and the most stable ones are the ones that do have a good experience. So customer support, customer love, and products that actually deliver results, it's key. It is key. Like if you want to survive, 
There are so many options. There's so many Facebook ads. There's so many different competitions or competitors out there where somebody could buy, let's say, a collagen protein or a weight loss shake or an anti-aging product or a shampoo or an essential oil. There's so much competition. So what makes you stand out? It's the customer love. It's the customer support. It's how you get it. Now, I'm going to do some some specific podcasts coming up more on the selling aspect, the closing aspect, different upselling things. But I want to specifically talk to this one of the actual experience of a customer. And if you do this right, the small little things, you can find and develop distributors amongst them. So distributors, potential teamies, other reps, you can find potential new distributors inside of your current customer pool because if you've done right by them and they're having a good product experience and they want to start opening their mouth to talk about it and start sharing it, that's a natural doorway, keyword, into upgrading to a distributor. So my question to you is when you get a customer right now, Let's say you finally got one, you got a win, you got a victory today. Is that customer a destination or is it a doorway? See, I think that those that are amateurs in this business or maybe even come from sales, they look at their customer acquisition as transactional. Like, boom, all right, got the sale, got the email, got the notification, made the commission, boom, my transaction is done. Where a network marketing professional, they view their customer and their customer pod and their pool as a doorway. See, every customer is a potential to maybe referrals, other customers, and possibly somebody that is now exposed to the products, involved in the experience, involved in maybe even like a Facebook group or a three-way chat or learning more about what you have. And then you can upgrade them to be a distributor. I just did the math and I might have shared on another podcast that about half of my current distributors that I've enrolled started as customers for first. Half. And why? Because my customers are not a destination, they're a doorway. Now, how do we really treat our customers good? Well, it starts on the front end. And it starts with knowing that as an entrepreneur, regardless of what biz, even if you're not inside of network marketing, but you're listening to this podcast for some wisdom, some gold nuggets, some motivation, you like my crazy whiny voice, okay, whatever you're doing here, glad that you're here. If you are in a customer-centric business, you want to make sure that you know you are solving problems. That's all entrepreneurs do. We are professional problem solvers. And the better that we get at understanding our potential customers' problems, the better that we're able to communicate the benefits. I see this so often with a lot of posts on social media because I'm in the industry and I I obviously follow a lot of other, um, not only my team, other teams, other companies, different network marketers. And I see them make a post and they're talking about like ingredients, and this has so much vitamin D, and this has so much riboflavin, and this has milk thistle or ashwagandha or whatever, or this is a specific technology. It's like nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares what's in it. Guys, facts tell, stories sell. And the story that you want to begin providing in that customer acquisition process is the benefits. What are the benefits that some, like nobody gets on Facebook today, nobody's jumping on TikTok, nobody's getting on Instagram and and like scrolling and they're thinking, I would love to buy some pills today. I'm looking, like it's rare that someone's like, I need to buy some powder or I want to buy some skincare. No, what they see is they see a transformation or what they see is perceived or they read about benefits. I saw it in, in our company, we sell skincare. And somebody had made a post talking about that we have this, this the world's first blankety blank skincare, like this this patent, right? This technology. And by the way, this specific technology, nobody's ever heard of. Not one. They have no idea about this technology. Nobody's ever heard about it before joining our company. They learn about it after, and then they understand, like, wow, okay, this technology is very very good for my skin. Like, okay, I, everything I was using in the past was like ridiculous. It was useless. It was noble, but it was useless. So once they know, like once they're educated, they get it. But as a prospect to scrolling, it doesn't hit me. What does somebody want in your product? What are they after? Results, benefits. 
They, they want, they don't want features. They want the benefits. They don't want the facts. They don't want the ingredients. Not necessarily that might help them make a logical decision, but emotionally, we make decisions by feelings and by emotions, and then we back it by logic. We back it by facts. We're very feelings-based buyers. That's how most people are. And so we see, what do we want in skincare? We want our skin to be luminous. We want it to be bright. We want it to be taut, toned, you know, even. We don't want blotchy skin or, or age and sunspots. We don't want wrinkles or crow's feet or loss of elasticity. We don't want acne. We don't, have, we don't want clogged pores. If we're clean and natural, we don't want any toxic parabens or sulfates or formaldehydes or, you know, phthalates or, you know, I don't know what, mineral oils. We want things that are going to, you know, not clog our pores. They're going to be exfoliating. We want bright. We want to glow. So you sell the, the the benefits of using the product. And by using the product, you're going to save X, Y, Z in money. Or you're going to replace the toxins with something that's all natural. So you're not messing up or jacking up your hormones. Guys, begin in this process of attracting with the benefits but once I get a customer, I'll tell you guys, the relationship has just, it might not have just begun, but it's continuing on. I might have known him for a while, but we're continuing on. And there's a few things that happen after I acquire customers. So first off, I have a little welcome letter. What to expect, how to use the product. Um, we have a customer referral program. So I want to make sure that they know how they can save money by opening up their trap and sending out their website and how simple it is to do so. Do you have an onboarding process for your customers? Maybe you have a Facebook group. If you don't, you should have a Facebook group for your customers. Ideally, probably one with everybody in it, like all customers, all distributors, all prospects, everybody in the pool, right? We call this group an ATM, an ad tag and message group where you can you can plunk in a customer, they can learn more about the products and then possibly learn about the other SKUs or the other offerings that you have. So it's kind of like this little place where they can go and marinate as they're waiting for their shipment to arrive. You might even be able to tag them in a usage video, like here's how to use the skincare or the hair care or the membership that you just bought or whatever it is, right? Then from there, I make sure, I message them something simple. Text me or message me when you get it. Now, you'd be shocked that part of the customer experience sometimes ends here is that they never use it. And I'm sure that's never happened to you. You've never bought something and then just not used it, right? I, I'm kind of embarrassed by the few things that I have on the shelf that are still in the packaging or still with a tag on it. But you want them using the product, especially if you're in a commodity kind of consumptive product where they're going to be using it monthly and you want to really help with retention. You want them to open the bottle. So first step, open the bottle. Second step, put it down your throat, right? That's what we want to, we got to get them in the habit of using it. And I kind of liken it very simple, like, hey, text me as soon as you get it. I want to give you then instructions. Sometimes it's as simple as, okay, great. You're going to take it in the morning with food. It doesn't have to be hard, guys, but I just want to make sure that I'm walking them through that. Hey, did you take it already today? Hey, did you take your first dose yet? Oh, yeah, I got it yesterday. I took my first dose this morning. Awesome. Hey, did you mix up that little energy stick yet? Did you taste that? Okay, what flavor did you like so far? Hey, have you cracked open this skincare yet? Doesn't it smell great? And if there's something where there's a before and after, this is also part of the process that I prep them with photos. I actually incentivize my customers to take photos. Why? Facts tell and stories sell. If you have a demonstrative product and you are not incentivizing and instructing your clients to take photos, I find that I need to give them a reward. It doesn't have to be big, guys. It might be a coupon for an next order. It could be samples of something. It could be a gift card. It could be like I, I right now I'm collecting a ton of hair care before and afters from my customers. So I'm like, hey, Try the hair care, use it for 90 days, and then I'm going to give you a free set um, after three months as long as I have your 90 day before and after. Why? How many? How, first off, I'm going to guarantee her usage for 90 days. I'm going to guarantee his usage. He's going to be, he's like, I got a goal. I'm going to take my photos for Rachel because then I'm going to get my reward. I got my carrot, right? This is my goal. But then how many other customers am I able Am I able to acquire then because I have a new before and after? So I'm funding future customers and it also helps me like, again, I want them using the product so I can serve them. How's it going? How does it feel? Any questions so far? Any hiccups? I want to know. 
I don't want somebody that gets frustrated in a product experience and doesn't feel like they've been served enough to get those questions answered. So sometimes with with wellness products, people might experience a detox or they might experience a little digestive upset or a headache or if all of a sudden, you know, I've, I've had crazy things like people are like, I have crazy headaches. I'm like, well, what did you do differently? I just started taking your product. Maybe I, it's not good for me. And then I found out that instead of they just took this product, but they also stopped coffee at the same time because they're like, well, I thought it was going to be healthy now. So I stopped drinking Starbucks every morning. I'm like, well, good for you, but please go have some green tea because you're having a caffeine withdrawal, right? So it's important, guys, to begin that customer experience. Now, when they're a new customer, I talk to them a lot more daily, sometimes several times a week or weekly. Um, Sometimes there's a lot more hand-holding, like whether it be like in weight management or coaching. So it's important that you know the products and like have some tools, even if you're not like a nutritionist or an expert, that you can at least provide them some expertise guidance, pointing them to some reference material that'll really help. Another thing that's really important is pick one day every single week where you do some follow-ups. I like Fridays. Follow-up Friday is really easy for me. I'll spend like half hour, maybe more if I have it, usually at least 10 to 15 minutes, the very minimum, but like half hour is a goal. And I'll go through a couple of my old customers and I just kind of circle back around. And a lot of what I do in circle circling back around with customer love, it is not just about products that they're using of mine. It's about their life. Like I know everything about a lot of my customers. Like Some of them, like, I know their marriage, I know who they're married to, I know what their spouse does for a living, I know what they do for work, I know how many kids that they have, I know that they're building, doing a remodel on their cabin, I know that they just changed out the flooring in their second bathroom, and they sent me photos because they want to know what tile to choose, and and we were talking about other things, the other products that we're taking, and we're talking about how we're working out, or now we're working at home, we're sharing different tips. I get to know them. The forming family occupation recreation message right? Or family occupation, recreation, motivation. That whole concept of building rapport doesn't end there. I also love to circle back around on like their Facebook posts. I'd like to see what's going on in their life. I do some investigation. I just want to know, like I want to bring up stuff. And it also provides, um, sometimes I get to see a new problem might have uh, kind of shown up in their life. You'd be amazed at what people put on their Facebook. Like people do put a lot. And all of a sudden they might share like, hey guys, please keep us in your prayers. Tom just lost his job. And so I can circle back to Mary and say like, hey, oh my God, I just wanted to let you know I'm praying for you and definitely not in a manipulative way or anything like, hey, let me know if there's anything I can do. We do not, guys, be a good human. We don't have to go around and be like, okay, your husband just lost his job. Uh, We need to talk about the business. Like, no, no, if there's anything I can do. If there's any referrals I can make, if there's any context, like I wish I knew people in this, in this area. Like I had a friend that was um, looking for work and I was trying to figure out, like my husband actually works for um, a big industry called Polaris, a big company, a publicly traded company, Uh, ATV, snowmobiles, boats, side by side, things like that. So Polaris has a plant outside of Portland, Oregon. And I have a friend that lived there and he was looking for, she was looking for a job um, and so I'm like, I was trying to find out her skills, her background, which, and it, it was not at all a fit for that specific job or that specific plant, that manufacturing plant. But it's like, gosh, if I know anybody, like if I knew any, like, I'd love to connect. She's like, thank you so much. Like, thank you for thinking of me and, um, like really asking me a lot of questions and praying for me. Guys, be a good human, be invested and interested in your teamies and your customers' lives. When you treat them well and when they know that you care about them, they will move mountains for you. Now, this serves really well because I also send out cards. I send out over 100 uh, Christmas cards to my personally enrolled and my customers uh, over Christmas this last year. I send thank you cards. I send products. I send samples of some of our more sampleable products. Um, um, Randomly, my most best customers ever, they'll get like full-size packages like a full size thing of skincare, hair care, and it's just to say thank you. Now, you might not have that in your budget, but I have a lot of extra product. And so, and I pretty much get paid to order it. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to I'm going to bless this customer that's been with me for 4 years. It's been a devoted customer. And it's a way to stand out and like even the little things, start small, handwritten note card, a thank you card. 
you know, a birthday card. What would happen if you got every single one of your customers birthdays? And there's there's great tools online like birthdayreminder.com, I think is one of them. And it can give you a seven day heads up of a birthday. And you send out a birthday card for them. There's greeting card services where you can automate these as campaigns. But a way to stand out, guys, is to take it offline. Don't do everything in Messenger. Call them every so often. Send them a little funny note. If you know that they're super into horses and then the next time that you're driving out in the country and you see this beautiful farm with all these horses, you know, grazing on the side, right? And you stop, really slow down, you take a photo and like, oh my gosh, I just saw these beautiful, beautiful horses, these um, Arabian horses. And I know that you've always loved that breed and it made me think of you. Or like in one of the things that I do frequently, it's become so habitual, is that if there's somebody in my life and I see their name on like a sign or like a, um, a street sign or something like that, I'll, if it's safe, again, if I'm driving, I'll, but if it's safe, I'll try to take a photo and I'll be like, ah. So for instance, my business partner, her last name is Wilson. And I used to drive past like this Wilson like Parkway all the time in Houston. And a couple times randomly, I'd be like, ah, thinking of you. There's another, um, one of my top leaders, her last name is Dale, D-A-L-E. And there's a uh, an exit for like Dale Avenue in the Twin Cities. And the first time I saw it, boom, I took a picture and I sent it to her like, ah, thinking of you, right? And so it's just another way to be like, you're top of mind. And guys, guess what? When you're in front of them, they think of you. When you stay in front of them, the next time that they need to lose weight or they want to get fit or they want to get healthier or they want to travel or whatever service that you have, they're going to be thinking of you. There might be other competitors that come along, but like, you know what, Rachel or Susie or Brandon or Callie has served me so well that I'm I'm sticking with them because I'm serviced here. I'm loved here. I'm valued. People will do so much for people that are valued. And one of the ways that I look at through this destination and doorway lens is the idea of uh, expose, involve, and upgrade. It's a process that I've used with recruiting for a long time is that I expose them to the products in the business. I involve them either through samples or through getting on as a customer, involve them into Facebook groups, involve them into you know reading more information, education, and then I upgrade them to be a distributor. But I let them get in where they fit in. If somebody's not ready right now to be a, to start a network marketing business, I say, great, hey, you know, it sounds like you're thinking about it. You have some trepidation. Sounds like things are crazy right now. Why don't we do this? Why don't we just get you started as a customer? Get on the products, create a relationship with them. And then you know, then you'll know in the next weeks or 30 days, like you'll know if this feels right for you. And if you want to refer others and the amount of pressure that comes off people like, yeah, oh. so it was like a sigh. Really, like, oh, I feel so much better. So when you are a good human and everyone really does matter, that customer love of sharing the benefits, of walking them through the process, of having some good tools, of educating them of what to expect, how, what other products that you have. The moment that your company comes out with a new product, you want to go tell them, guys, if you just sold them a year ago on a multivitamin, and then now you come out with like a fish oil or whatever, or a new, you know, maybe you were in, uh, I know one company was in hair care and then they launched skincare, but you didn't service those customers. And then you go back to them after not saying a word to them for over a year. Say, hey, 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 you know, hey, I want to let you know we have this skincare launching. Yeah, you might get some incidental sales, but how much more effective would your closing rate be if you truly cared about them enough so that when you came to them with that new product offering, they're like, you know what? I've been talking to you every month. Yeah, I'll try it. Yeah, anything for you. I had, um, we had some Black Friday sales. This was just two months ago. And I, I was so, I had like a little, I was kind of proud. I was like, I had a couple warm fuzzies that day because I was shooting for my own personal goal. And I reached out to customers and said, hey, listen, I'm running for this goal personally. We have 20% off all of our products. It's probably, you may or may not, like you might be good, but I would do you a disservice by not letting you know that things are on sale right now. And if you want to order, hey, order by Friday at midnight. And I had a ton of people like, hey, you know, I'm ordering just because it's you. I'm, I'll do anything for you. What else can I help you with? I'm like, ah, oh, I love my customers. So what are some of the ways that you can improve the experience 
on the front end, when they're getting started on the back end? What is a system that you can put in place on your team like Follow Up Friday? Where you give you guys, we do power hours with our team where we'll get on for 45 minutes an hour and we'll put on some timers and we'll go through our customers and we'll send them all a little message, a little voice memo. Hey, how are you doing? What are ways that you can become a better customer gatherer and a better customer keeper? That's today's conversation. We'll see you tomorrow on another episode of the Soul CEO Podcast. Please share this. I'm not on Instagram right now. Well, I am. Still follow me at Soul CEO. I'm taking a break. Ah, hopefully it'll work and it'll fix that account. I love you guys. Appreciate you. God bless.